Well, thanks for hanging out with me, Colorado. February is Pet Dental Health Month, so we're going to give you some tips to keeping your dog's teeth fresh and healthy. We all have pets, or mostly everyone in Denver has a pet. Let's talk about doggies and cats and their dental health. Why is that so important? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the, the mouth is kind of the gateway to the rest of the body. And so it's uh, it's really, really important that we focus on on the mouth and dental health as, as part of our complete and uh, thorough care for our pets. Uh, we see a number of, of patients that have some substantial dental disease over the years, and it's just a, an important part of keeping everybody as, as healthy as possible uh, for, for all of our, our pets that we see. Of course, uh, I, we have a seven-year-old miniature poodle, and there's bad breath in dogs, and then there's the kind that my dog has been having lately, and I think it could be some sort of dental issue. When is it time to bring them in? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's something that we look at every year. Um, it, do, every dog is a little different in terms of how, how quickly they put on dental tartar or develop disease, uh, especially in our smaller dogs. We tend to see that happen pretty quickly. So it's something that we will uh, analyze at every annual visit that we have with our pets that come to see us. And uh, part of that assessment is is making sure that if there is a need for, for additional dental care, that we're talking about that and getting that set up on a regular basis. Okay, so we definitely have to get him checked. And when it comes to dental cleanings, how often should we be doing those? So again, it's a little bit individual specific. Um, little dogs and cats tend to put on uh, tartar and develop disease uh, faster than maybe our, our larger dogs. Uh, we also see dogs that have kind of smushy faces like our French bulldogs or English bulldogs or dogs that are like that um, tend to uh, develop tartar and gingivitis faster than some other dogs do. And so you know, it's something that we should consider maybe even on an annual basis. Uh, we know from, from the research that's been done in this area that uh, the vast majority of dogs will develop some sort of dental disease by the age of, of two or three years old. So once we get to that point in time, you know, it's really something important that we consider on a, on a year by year basis. Got it. Okay, good, good info there. I'm just curious because I've had a few crazy cats in my day. I mean, they were not nice. When it comes to dental cleaning on cats, how do you do that? It's definitely, uh, it can be an adventure. So um, for, for home, home care, you know, especially with cats, it can be tricky. Um, most cats don't really uh, tolerate having their teeth brushed, although it's a, a worthwhile effort if, uh, if that is doable at home. And then um, for, for cats and for dogs, when we clean their teeth in the veterinary hospital, it does require us to put them under anesthesia. Uh, we just can't expect them to understand what's happening or sit still and tolerate the, the dental probe going in their mouth. Um, it's, it's hard enough for me to, to you know have the, the x-ray in my in my cheek and I know what's happening so uh, for our cats and dogs that just don't understand exactly what's going on we really uh, want to make it as least stressful for them as possible and the, the safest and most effective way to do that is to have them under anesthesia absolutely okay so when somebody's bringing in their pet to have a dental cleaning what is the time frame do they usually drop off the pet come back another day or how does that work yeah, so it's it's typically a same day process. Um, okay. We usually will have clients drop their pets off with us in the morning, and um, the the way that usually works is we'll give them some medication to help them relax and be calm, and that will facilitate us uh, placing an intravenous catheter and inducing anesthesia, and then getting them all set up with the the various anesthetic monitoring parameters that we use. So we try to make it as thorough and as safe as we possibly can, and then we will take X-rays of all their teeth, we'll clean and polish their teeth, and then we'll address you know any disease that needs to be addressed whether there's a broken tooth or an abscess or something along those lines, hopefully not. Um, and then um, typically they wake up from anesthesia. It takes about half an hour or so for that process to happen. We like to keep them in the hospital for another hour or two before they go home. Um, but then they're usually home back with their family that same afternoon. Okay. So any other pet health recommendations that stick out to you that we should know? You know, I think it's just one of those things where we really want to make sure we're keeping an eye on things routinely. So having your pet evaluated by a veterinarian on a yearly basis is, is part of that recommendation. And then anything we can do at home to help with their, their oral health is great. So brushing teeth is, is the one thing we know that works really, really well. Um, that's not always feasible and certainly something that uh, we want to do if, if it's possible, but we don't want to let that sort of ruin our relationship with our pets. Um, there are yeah. a number of other options like water additives and, and chews and things along those lines as well. So um, those are all, all important strategies and parts of the puzzle there. Thanks for the tips, Dr. Rob. And for more tips, you can book an appointment online at goodheartcherrycreek.com.